Hi, and welcome to Crafts with Ash DIY and Decor. My name's Ashley, and today I am bringing you five new high-end Christmas dupes. These pieces originally came from either Pottery Barn or Kirkland's, and I loved the pieces, but I did not like the price tag, so I thought that I would try to dupe them in today's video. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button, so that way we can hang out more often. All right, let's go ahead and get started with these high-end dupes. For my first DIY, I started off with this wooden tree, of course, from the Dollar Tree. Now, I am going to fill the hole with this new hack that I learned, and all you do is just put your piece on, like, wax paper or something that would not stick, and you just simply fill the hole with hot glue and let it set up. Next, I'm going to take this apple barrel paint called Territorial Beige, and I just feel like this is the perfect gingerbread color. Once I gave that two coats, I put that aside, and I had this extra block left over from a DIY in another video, so I'm going to go ahead and paint that with the same color. After everything is dry, I'm going to take my puffy paint, and this is where the fun begins. Now, I am looking at a photo from the original piece on the Kirkland's website, but I just kind of got creative with it and made my own designs and just painted it and just made it my own. After I had all of my designs uh, puffy painted on, I went ahead and took this white glitter that I got from Hobby Lobby and I sprinkled it all over my big gingerbread tree. How delicious does this look? I mean, honestly, wait, it's not even done yet. So I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle this all over the tree. And then I'm going to turn the little block on its side so the skinnier side is facing up. And I'm going to add some puffy paint to the bottom to look like melted snow. And then I'm going to add some glitter on that as well. This little piece right here is going to be the base for our tree so our tree can stand. So this is where I think this piece absolutely comes to life. I took a small paintbrush, dipped it in some Mod Podge, and I'm just painting around all of my designs, and of course, I'm going to sprinkle some glitter, and I loved how this came out. This is probably one of my favorite DIYs in this entire video, and it is so, so gorgeous. Now, I do a gingerbread-themed kitchen uh, for Christmas every year, so this will go perfect in my kitchen this year. And I cannot wait to put it out. So you just take that glitter and you just sprinkle it everywhere to make it look like a delectable gingerbread cookie tree. Next, I'm going to put a generous amount of hot glue at the bottom of my tree and then stand it up on the top of that base. I am going to hold it there until the glue mostly sets up, and then I am going to add some glue to the front. Now, to hide that glue, I am going to take my puffy paint once the glue dries, and I'm going to cover it up to make it look like snow, and then again, I am going to go in with the glitter. Now, at this point, I just kind of... Uh, added like snow or puffy paint and glitter as I just kind of saw fit or I would maybe dip my um, paintbrush into the Mod Podge and just painted some more Mod Podge over it, added some glitter. So this is totally up to you how much glitter you want or you don't want. <laughs> But I'm telling you, the glitter is what brought this whole piece to life. Now, I did go ahead and add a tumbling tower block to the back just for some extra support. But And then I added some uh, glitter to the back as well because why not? You know, it's glitter. So after that, I went ahead and added some uh, designs to the sides of my base. Just basically dressing my base up a little bit. I, like I said, love how this came out. It was one of my favorites. It's so funny that my two favorites in this video all revolve around glitter. Huh. 
interesting. Anyways, after everything was dry, that's it. That completes my Christmas tree cookie. Here's the one from Kirkland's $50, $49.99. And here is mine. Don't forget to check out my other channel, Life with Ash. This channel is a more behind the scenes vlog style channel filled with mama life, mama hacks, cleaning, organizing, hauls, shopping, decluttering, decorating, and even more fun. That channel is all about real life. My hair is always in a messy bun. I live in leggings. I rarely ever wear makeup and I'm just trying to get through this thing called life. So if you can relate to any of that, jump down to the description box below and click the link to my other channel, Life with Ash, and come hang out with me over there. For the next dupe, I'm going to take two books that I got from the Dollar Tree. You wanna make sure that they are two different sizes, one bigger, one smaller. I took the covers off of both books. We are going to cover these with fabric. Now, uh, I made this a little harder on myself because I got this tree skirt from the Dollar Tree because I really liked that red and black check. It's not just one full piece of fabric. So I kind of had to be creative with this and lay it out in a way that it would cover the top of my book. Once I got it all laid out, I'm going to take a marker and I'm just going to trace around it and then I'm going to cut it out. Now, first I started cutting out on the line that I traced, but you actually want to cut out a little bigger than what you traced because you need some extra fabric to fold over to glue on the inside of the book. Once you have your piece cut out, you're going to lay it out and then start gluing it to the inside of the book. And when you do this, you wanna pull the fabric taut so that way it's stretched out over the cover of your book. So as I'm gluing my fabric down, I am just taking some scissors and trimming it up a bit just to kind of clean it up. And I am making sure that the fabric covers the top cover of my book. So I want to take an opportunity and welcome you to my YouTube channel. My name is Ashley and I am so happy that you clicked on my video today. If you love all things DIY, you have come to the right place. We are entering into a busy season, obviously, with holiday and Christmas crafting and gift ideas and just some fun content coming up. So if you love what you see so far, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Also hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications notifications so you are notified about any videos that I post. So I did end up cutting off the little fur part of that tree skirt. However, as you can see, it kind of created like a curve and then also then did not go over the back of the book, the binding. We are going to fix that in just a moment. I'm just kind of going through and cleaning it up and trying to figure out how I'm going to fix that. But uh, we are going to put that aside for now and we will come back to it. So I'm going to set that book aside and I'm going to take the smaller book and for this I thought that I would use this really pretty stocking. Now I am planning on putting this book stack in my bedroom and for Christmas I do decorate it in the little red truck theme. The great thing about this DIY is you can use any fabric you like. Dollar Tree did not have fabric pieces per se, so I just kind of went around and looked at the fabric that I could use or take from. So they had stockings, they had placemats, they had napkins, they have kitchen towels. So there really was a lot of fabric to choose from if you just think a little differently and get creative. So what I'm gonna do is actually cut this in half. I'm going to separate the front part of the stocking from the back. And then I'm going to lay out the stocking over the top of my book so that way I could tell where I was going to glue it. 
Then again, once I had my book laid out on my fabric, I'm going to take my permanent marker and just kind of draw some lines so I know where to cut around. And again, I am going to cut longer than what I need or bigger than what I need. Now, I did end up cutting off the top of the stocking because I am not going to need it, but hey, that's good fabric that I can use in the future. And then I'm going to cut down my stocking so it fits over my book cover. Next, I'm going to lay the cover out on the back of the fabric, and I'm going to hot glue it to the inside. Now, again, you want to pull it taut, so that way it stretches over the book cover. Now, because there was a design on this, I wanted to make sure to get the tr as much as the truck as I could on the cover. Not all of it fit, but the majority of it did. So I was just kind of pulling and tugging and just making sure that the front part of my book was covered. Now this stocking actually had enough fabric for me to go around the back of the binding. I'm not even going to worry about the bottoms of these books because you are not going to see them. So I'm not going to waste fabric or anything uh, covering the bottoms. But again, I'm just going to hot glue the back of the fabric to the binding. After my fabric is completely glued down, I am going to go around and just trim up on the edges and just clean it up a bit. But basically your goal here is just to cover the front part of your book with whatever fabric you choose. So once that book is covered, we are actually going to jump to the second book or the original book. And I am going to use the part that I just cut off of that red truck stocking. It's felt. So I thought, oh, I'm just going to cover, you know, the remaining remainder of that other book. So what I wanted to do first, though, is hot glue the edge up a little bit to make it a nice clean edge. And then I'm going to hot glue it down to the back side now this is the binding of this original book that we uh, covered now again this really is not going to be seen so I'm not too too worried about it but I did want to clean it up just a little bit and again if you have a full piece of fabric you will not have to do this part but because you know I like like to make things harder uh, and I chose that tree skirt which had a big hole in it and it was like a curve like a circle I had to kind of you know figure it out as I went and just kind of take from pieces here and there so I am just taking this red felt fabric and I am just going to again pull it taut pull it tight and I'm just going to glue it down now again the underneath the bottom of this book does not look pretty but that's okay because no one will ever see it Now, I apologize, my camera moved here and I did not realize it, but basically all I'm doing is just taking a black ribbon and I am going to glue it to that felt. And I did this because the I did not like where the felt met the black um, fabric, so I just wanted something to kind of hide that. I don't know. I, I This part probably was not necessary, but I just thought that it would make it look a little neater. And also, it just added some texture and made it look a little more high-end, too. So after both of my books were covered, I am left with this really fun book stack that I can use in my bedroom. Here is the stack from Kirkland's $34.99, and we created ours for about $5. And I think these will make great layering pieces. This next dupe is one of my other favorites, and this was so easy but fun to do. 
So what you're going to do is take the LED candles from the Dollar Tree and then you're just going to take a knife and just start putting little cuts into it. We are going to make some birchwood candles. So I did this on two of them now. The one on the Pottery Barn website actually was a set of three but this is all I had in my stash so this is what I did. So now I'm just going to simply dry brush some chocolate bar apple barrel paint all over my candles and you don't have to get full coverage this does not have to you know look good or anything because what we're going to do is actually take a wipe and we are going to lightly wipe this off the purpose of this coat right here is to get into all of those little slits that you made with your knife so if anything you just want to make sure that those slits um, become darker by using the paint. So I just did this on both of the candles. So next I'm going to take that territorial beige that we used before and I am just basically dry brushing this all over my candle and this is what's going to give it more of the birch wood color. So I am lightly, lightly taking a baby wipe and wiping it off but I don't want to wipe all of it off. I'm just kind of blending it in. And I'm going to do this with both of these candles. I'm just kind of dry brushing and wiping as I go. You know how they say the devil is in the details? Well, this is going to bring it to life. What I did was take some of that chocolate bar paint and dipped the tip of my paintbrush in the paint. And then I am just dab, dab, dabbing it in random spots all over both of my candles and that's going to give it like that wood type of look and look at that i feel like by doing this it completed the look of the birch wood candle and i think i only did like three little sections on each some of them i did a little darker some of them i did a little lighter so it's really up to you know what you like and what you think looks good but i love how these came out and we're not done yet Next, I'm going to take my Mod Podge, I'm going to paint some of that on, and I am going to sprinkle some of that really pretty glitter all over each of my candles. So what I did was I basically covered like half of the candle in Mod Podge, did the glitter, turned it around, covered the other half in Mod Podge, and then covered it with glitter. And look how pretty that is. Wait till you see them lit up at the very end, but I just think that this brought it all together and it really does look like the original piece from Pottery Barn which you're going to see here in just a minute. Now again you could stop right at the birch wood you don't have to even mess with the glitter or anything but in my opinion I think that that's what makes it so pretty. Look how gorgeous this makes me want to go get a third one from the Dollar Tree so I can make another. So here are the Pottery Barn candles and they are called Sugared Birch and I just, I think those are gorgeous too. But I think I came pretty close. For this next dupe, you are going to need a ring and you're going to want to spray paint it or paint it white. I did not get footage of that. I'm so sorry. Next, you're going to take three of these white trees from the Dollar Tree and you're going to take some wire cutters and just start cutting off each of these branches. Now, I did not wrap my branches all the way around my wreath ring, so you will need more trees than just three but I thought that it looked good with what I had so once my ring was dry I am going to start in the middle like the inner ring and I am going to hot glue my branches on the inside of the ring and I'm going to go all the way around then I'm going to start kind of going in now you do want to stick to one direction but you're going to poke in the branches 
going all the way around the ring on the front. I hope that makes sense. So you don't have to go around like front to back, but just so it's nice and full in the front. Now, some of the pieces I did use hot glue to uh, secure it a little better, but this these branches do have wire, so you can poke them in. And as you can see, I am just poking them in, and I did layer by layer. So I did one ring around, and then I did another ring around, and basically I am just making sure that this ring of, you know, this wreath, I guess we're making, ends up really really full now if you can find a white or green whatever you want if you can do this with an actual wreath that you have already but i just thought that i would show you how you can make it out of dollar tree supplies and it really was inexpensive too so it's not like i you know could have bought this for any cheaper so I'm just going to go through and fill in any holes, but basically I'm going to do this until I get a nice full wreath. Now I'm going to get this sign and you can get any of these like wooden blocks or if you just have scrap wood, whatever you have. We just need a base because this is actually going to be a tabletop wreath, which is what they have on the Kirkland's website. So I went ahead and got that sticker off. Then I'm going to take a dowel. I just broke it in half. Uh, you can use um, your miter shears to do that. But I just went ahead and broke it in half. And then I just took my scissors to clean up the tops. They don't need to be really long for what we're doing. And after that, I took some hot glue and I am going to douse the bottom of this because I need these sticks to stand up on their own. So I did end up holding these in place until all of the glue set up. So I did hold, hold these up for several minutes and then even after I went through and added more hot glue. After that, I took some white Waverly chalk paint and I'm just going to paint this entire thing. I'm going to do the top, the dowels, the sides. I'm going to do everything except for the actual bottom of the base. Now I'm going to take my wreath, and as you see, I did not cover the entire thing, so if you do want to cover it, as I stated before, you're going to need more than the three trees. I just used what I had. So now you're just going to simply poke your dowels into your wreath, and now that makes it a tabletop wreath. Now, I did go through and reinforce it by adding some hot glue to the dowels, but look how cute this is. Here's the one on the Kirkland's website, $49.99. Now, you know I'd love to spray glitter this. I just didn't have any spray glitter. But for now, this is mine. Okay, so this next one is actually one from a couple years ago, but I saw it still on the Pottery Barn website, so I thought I'd include it. I'm going to use this $3 nativity set that I got from Dollar General. Now, <laughs> this one was my favorite one to do. This one was so much fun. So basically, I'm taking out all of my pieces and then I'm going to take that steel chalk paint from Waverly and I'm going to paint all of the little figures. Now when I pulled these out, they were a little rough around the edges so I am taking my nail file and I'm just sanding them down a bit so that way it makes it nice and smooth. So the only pieces that I'm going to be painting with that steel color are Mary, Joseph, the sheep, the camel, and the three wise men and I think that there is a shepherd boy there. So just basically the little figures, but I'm going to leave the little stable natural. Now, as you can see, I kind of had to make a line at the bottom where I'm going to separate the figures from the stable. But the first step was just to paint each one of these with that steel chalk paint from Waverly. 
So once those were all painted, I'm gonna do the same technique I did to the pizza pan and we're gonna faux galvanize these. However, it's not gonna be as dark, so I'm only going to use the white and the metallic gray. So I'm gonna go through and I'm just gonna dab, dab, dab that white all over it, each one of those little gray pieces, and then I'm gonna go over it again with that steel paint to kind of mute down and kind of bring it all together. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna add that metallic paint to give it that little shiny look. You're gonna see that I do add more because I kinda wanted it to look a little bit more shiny. But for now, this will work. Now I'm not doing the edges of this because I thought that the natural wood around the edges looked really cool. All right, so I put all my pieces aside and now I'm gonna take these jumbo craft sticks from Walmart and I'm basically gonna figure out how many I need to cover the back of this little stable or nativity scene. So I did end up using five, so I'm laying them out and then I'm gonna trace on the outside of my nativity scene. Now I'm only gonna line up the top to the bottom so you can see that there's little shapes cutouts at the top I'm gonna make sure that it starts at the bottom of that and goes down and then I'm just gonna use my scissors and cut where I made my marks this wood is so soft that it was easy for me just to use regular scissors but I do have a pair of scissors that I use just for cutting wood for some reason, my miter shears will not work on these dowels. I don't know why. Or, I'm sorry, not the dowels, the craft sticks. They do work on dowels, <laughs> but we're not using any right now. But they just won't work on these craft sticks, but these scissors were good enough. So now I have them all cut down, so now I'm lining them back up just to make sure that the positioning and sizing is correct. And it is. So now it's time to paint. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to faux stain two of them. And it doesn't matter the order you do this in, this is just what I did. So I'm gonna faux stain the top one. And I'm gonna do this by dipping my baby wipe in my Waverly Antique Wax and rubbing it across. And then I'm laying them back out again to see which other one I wanna faux stain. So I'm gonna do the fourth one down. And again, I'm just gonna use my baby wipe and Waverly Antique Wax. Then I'm gonna paint two of them with ivory chalk paint from Waverly. And then I'm gonna paint the last one with my elephant chalk paint from Waverly. Once these were dry, I'm going to make them look distressed. So for the ivory ones, I'm gonna dip my little chunky brush in my Waverly Antique Wax, and I'm gonna dry brush over those ones. And then for the stained ones and the elephant gray, I'm going to use my white chalk paint to distress those ones. Then I'm gonna go through and I'm going to uh, sand each one of these now they kind of took a lot of the distressing like see they took a lot of the paint off the distressing paint off so I am going to go back and I'm going to distress or dry brush over each one of these one more time
And basically, I'm just dry brushing and sanding until I get the look that I'm going for. Once these were all complete, I'm going to line them back up and then turn them upside down. And then I'm just going to use the little scrap pieces of wood that I had cut off of these sticks. And I'm going to use those to hot glue the sticks all together on the back. Now, I did not intend for there to be gaps in between these craft sticks. I just think I didn't realize that there was at the time. But it's totally up to you if you want to put a gap in between the sticks or put them right next to each other. Then I flipped my piece back over and now I'm going to hot glue the nativity piece on top of what I just created. Now there was a little overhang on the top and the sides and the bottom so I am just going to take my regular scissors and I'm going to cut that off. Now actually in the Pottery Barn piece, you can actually see the overhang, but I didn't like that, so on mine, I chose to cut it off. And then I did sand it down so it was nice and smooth. Then I'm gonna take another one of these gold stars and I'm going to paint it with that steel chalk paint. Then again, I'm just gonna dab it with some white paint to give it that faux galvanized look. Then I'm going to take that star and I'm going to hot glue it in the middle of that other star that's already there. And then, now I just cut the bottom of that, so that's why I was sanding it. But now it's time to put this together. So that base actually came with the set. So I'm going to hot glue the nativity to the back of the base. And I am hot gluing it in that slot, except for it doesn't fit now because I added another layer of wood. So I'm just doing my best to hot glue it so it stays up and it did it, it went pretty good and now I'm just kind of laying out all my pieces and figuring out where I want them to go so I put the three wise men on the right side and you're gonna see that I do it in different levels different sections so it looks all 3d then once I figure out where I want to hot glue them I'm just going to use my hot glue and hot glue each of them down And then here is where I decided to go ahead and add even more metallic silver paint. I just really wanted these to be really shiny and to pop off the background. But after that second layer, or third layer actually, of metallic paint was on, this DIY was complete. And like I said, I absolutely loved how this came out. This could also be another one where you can stick some lights in and make it light up. So here is the Pottery Barn version, $69. It doesn't look exactly the same, but hey, I thought I got it pretty darn close. What do you think? I am absolutely loving how all of my dupes came out today. I think I got them pretty darn close. And the fun part is you can customize them 
to whatever fabric you like for the books or if you want to do a gold wreath or a silver wreath or a an actual green wreath maybe with some uh, snowy flocking on it it is totally up to you you're gonna have to let me know down in the comments which one of these dupes was your favorite today you already know mine I love that gingerbread tree and these candles although that nativity Oh, it's gorgeous. My mom actually has it um, at her house. She puts it out every year. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and turn on those notifications so you can be notified when I upload more fun content coming soon. Don't forget to check out my other channel so you can see me decorate my house for Christmas. Well, until I see you again, I'll craft with you soon. Bye.